Hello students, hope you are doing well and you are also studying well. Welcome to this video. So today we will be beginning, uh, starting with unit 5 that is all about random variables and probability distributions. So the random variable is a real number x which is associated with the outcome of a random experiment. What do you mean by random experiment? So this is the first definition we had started with the concept of probability. What do you mean by random experiment? It's a statistical process which can be repeated any number of times. Examples we had discussed about tossing of coins, rolling of dice, removing some cards from the playing uh, set of cards, or removing some balls from one particular box. Uh, these all are the random experiments. Then a real number x which is associated with the outcomes of the random experiment is called as a random variable. So random variable is a one real number and which is always an integer number which is associ associated with the outcome of a random experiment. That is called as a random variable. So example like you can say now here one example I'm trying to solve. We'll be solving this example to uh, where the random variable x is the number of heads in toss of three coins. Okay, random variable could be a number on the dice. Okay, so there are possibly uh, possible numbers of one, two, three, four, five, six. So this random variable has these all values. So this is what the example of random variable. Now we will be covering all the options, all the possible outcomes of that entire random experiment, and that will form a probability distribution. Now here we need to form a probability distribution of x where x is the number of heads in the toss of three coins. Now how will you write the sample space for it? Now the sample space for it, now every coin has got only two outcomes. So it is like this. So let me write the sample space here. So these are the pairs we have, head tail into head tail into head tail for every coin 1, 2, 3 you can say. Okay. Now it will be head, 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 tail, tail, head, tail, tail. So if we find the cross multiplication of these two and again we will be having head, tail. Now the cross multiplication of these two would be giving us So this is what head with all these four and then tail So these are so the total outcomes we have are 8. So the total outcomes for toss of 3 coins are 8 and these are those total outcomes. I mean these all are, these all are those outcomes. All heads, 2 heads, then 1 tail, then 2 heads again, then 2 tails, then 2 heads again, 2 tails, 2 tails and then last one is with all of them tails. So these are the possible outcomes we have. Okay. Now. We will have columns here, number of heads, which is nothing but our random variable x, okay. Then favorable cases will be writing, which is any one of this. Then the next thing is. Number of favorable cases, here we will write the favorable cases which are applicable, then the number of favorable cases and then the probability of x. So now this is the table we have formed to write the probability distribution. Okay, so now how many values are possible? So now what is x here? x is the number of heads. So how many values are possible for the number of heads? Those many rows will be having here. Okay, so now 
if you look at the possible outcomes, what is the minimum number of heads you can have when three co uh, coins are tossed? Okay. So now, minimum number of heads would be, you cannot say one. Now, if you consider this particular case where there are no heads, so that you can say minimum number of heads are zero. So, it will be starting the value of x from zero. What would be the maximum number of heads? When it is toss of three coins, then maximum number of heads would be three. Okay, then 0, 1, 2 and then 3. These are the number of heads we are writing. So possible, these are the, we cannot have more than 3 and we cannot have less than 0 as well. So 0, 1, 2, 3. These are the possible number of heads we have. So favorable outcomes where it is number of faces zero is only one possible case, which is tail, tail and tail. Okay. And it is only one such case is there and then its probability is given by one divided by eight. Yeah, favorable cases divided by total cases. Now in the number of heads we have we have exactly one head. So exactly one head there are such Cases like uh, T, T, H, okay, then this is one case, another is T, H, T, and one more case would be H, T, 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 H, T, H, T, and H, T, T. These are the cases we have. Then we have number of cases, favorable cases are 3 and then probability would be 3 by 8. Then the number of heads where we have 2. So exactly 2 heads we have to consider. So those cases are like this, that T, H, H, then we have H, T, H and then H, H and then T. These are the possible cases we have. Tail, head, head, then head, tail, head and then head, head, tail. So there are such three cases and we will have 3 divided by 8. And then the last one with number of heads is 3. I mean exactly 3 heads. So there is only one such outcome. which is head, head, head and number of favorable cases are 1 and 1 divided by 8 is the probability. So this completes your probability distribution. This completes your probability distribution. Now when you find the total of all these probability then you should always get it is exactly equal to 1. Okay, so now it is 1 by 8 plus 3 by 8 plus 3 by 8 plus 1 by 8. All denominators are same, obviously. Everywhere you have denominators same and that's summation. 1 plus 3 is 4 plus 3 is 7 plus 1 is 8. So this gives you 8 divided by 8 which is exactly equal to 1. So you should always remember the summation of all these probabilities is always, it should be equal to 1. Then only you can say your probability distribution is written correctly and you should also and in this favorable cases whatever you write this all should cover all together all the cases of the sample space. Then only it completes your probability distribution. Now this is one example where random variable is given along with the number of heads. Okay. Similar such examples we can consider to obtain the probability distribution where it is related with another random experiment and the number of uh, outcomes is related this way like if it is the rolling of dice then say number of outcomes or the x variable which is the random variable is the number which we get on the dice. 
then in that case we'll have all the cases from 1 to 6 all right if it is a dice uh, where we are rolling two dice then it could be summation i mean the summation of numbers on two dice that could be the random variable so hope you have understood this example as well we'll see two more such examples on where we need to find the dist probability distribution so that we'll see in the connecting hello students welcome back so con uh, again continuing with the probability distribution two more examples i have here two dice are rolled and we need to find the probability distribution of the sum of the numbers on them okay so now when there are two dice what is the minimum sum we can have and what is the maximum sum you can have now we'll have as usual columns here so here our random variable x is the sum of sum of numbers on two dice this is the random variable and then the variable x will denote the sum of these random variable uh, sum of the two uh, numbers on two dice so minimum we can have score two i mean when two dice are rolled we can have minimum number is 2 and maximum is So x is the sum of two numbers on the dice. So now first we'll be writing here favorable cases. Then we come with number of favorable cases and then the probability of x okay so 2 is the sum of two numbers on the dice favorable case we have only one possibility that is 1 comma 1 so number of cases favorable cases are 1 and probability of getting 2 is favorable cases divided by total cases so for 2 Dice it is 36. So probability is 1 by 36. For for getting 3, we have two possible cases that is 1, comma 2 and 2, comma 1. Then we have number of favorable cases 2 and then 2 by 36 is the probability. Then how do we get sum 4 is 2 comma 2, 1 comma 3 and 3 comma 1. So 3 by 36. And the case where we need summation 5. So possible cases are... Four cases are possible, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1, 4, 4, 1. And to get the summation 6,
these are the possible cases we have and to get the summation 7 We have this that is 3, 4, 4, 3, 5, 2, 2, 5, 6, 1, 1, 6. Then to get the summation 8, This is how for summation 8 we have 5 cases to get 9. So your probability distribution is completed. So you have to just verify that addition of all this probability gives you 1. So denominator is same for all of them. You have to just go on adding the numerators. So 1 plus 2 gives you 3 plus 3 gives you 6 plus 4 gives you 10 plus 5 gives you 15 plus 6 21 plus 5 26 30 33 35 36. So 36 by 36 gives you 1. So your probability distribution is completed. It's, co it's correct and also you have covered all the favorable cases. So this is one example. Now the second example is this way that there are 5 bad mangoes which are accidentally mixed with 20 good ones. 4 are drawn at random from the lot. Find the probability that find the probability distribution of x the number of bad mangoes okay so there are five bad mangoes which are mixed with 20 good ones so total mangoes we have is 25 from this randomly we are choosing four of them at a time so from 25 mangoes we choose four out of them at random then we need to find the probability distribution x which is the number of bad mangoes okay so now x is the number of bad mangoes Now here I need to form a table where x denotes the number of bad mangoes and then we have to write the probability of x. Now what could be the minimum number of bad mangoes and what could be the maximum number of bad mangoes. Anyways we are choosing 4 out of them so all we are calculating for choosing 4 items out of 25. So we are calculating the probability for 4 of them. Then out of these 4, what could be the minimum number of uh, bad mangoes at maximum number? So you can say maximum number is all 4 mangoes could be bad and minimum could be none of them could be bad. So minimum number could be 0 of bad mangoes and maximum could be 4. Though there are 5 bad mangoes out of 12 in the total lot, but we are choosing only 4 of them. 
so minimum number would be 0 maximum would be 4 so my value of x would be 0 1 2 3 4 hope you have understood why I have taken 0 1 2 3 4 now the second thing is we need to find the total outcomes as well as the favorable outcomes now for total outcomes out of 25 we are choosing four mangoes okay so you will be calculating it by using combination that out of 25 we are uh, choosing four mangoes 25 c4 then its calculation is like this So we have 1, 2, 6, 5, 0. These are our total outcomes. Okay. Then we need to calculate probability for all these cases. Okay. <clears throat> so case 1 is with bad mangoes are 0. So that means none of the 4 mangoes which are drawn, none of the mangoes are 0. All of them are good. And good mangoes are 20. So for the first case where we have 0, bad mangoes it is 20 c4 divided by 25 c4 so divided by 25 c4 is common so for the first we are choosing all of them from the good ones so it is 20 c4 so here i'll be writing this way That is 20 C4 divided by 25 C4. So let me calculate 20 C4 first.
So for the case 0, it is 4845 divided by 12650. Okay, now <coughs> now case 2 case 2 is we have drawn four mangoes and one of it is bad mango and three of them are good mangoes. So our favorable cases are out of the five bad mangoes, out of the five bad mangoes, one is chosen and rest three mangoes are from good mangoes. So it is 5C1 into 20C3. So 5C1 gives you 5 only. So let me just calculate 20C3. So for this, it is 5700, that is 1140 is 20C3 into 5. So it gives you Then in the next case where we have two mangoes which are bad and remaining two would be good mangoes. So we will have 5C2 and 22, 20C2. I mean two mangoes from good and two mangoes from bad. This will be the distribution. So 5C2 gives me. and then 20 C2 gives me 190 so 1900 1900 would be the favorable outcomes for the case 2. Then next in the case 3, there are 3 mangoes which are from good mangoes and other only 1 mangoes which is two, uh, 3 are bad mangoes and only 1 which is chosen from good mangoes. So from the 5 bad mangoes, 3 are chosen and from 20 good mangoes 1 is chosen ok so now let me check 5c3 what does it gives me this also gives me 10 and then 20c1 obviously gives you 20 so it gives ultimately 200 so the this case where we are choosing three bad mangoes and one good so favorable outcomes we get is 200 
divided by 1, 2, 6, 5, 0. Okay, alright. Then the next case, the last one. Where we are choosing all of them bad mangoes. So in that case, all four mangoes we are choosing from five bad mangoes and we are not choosing any mango which is good. So our favorable outcomes are only 5C4 and if you check 5C4 that gives you 5. So ultimately, So this gives us 5 divided by 1, 2, 6, 5, 0. So this completes your probability distribution. Now we have to check whether addition of all of them gives us the same. So let me check whether we can give, we can calculate the same denominator if we get the addition of as same. So 50005 gives me 10. 4 plus 1, 5. So this also gives you 12650, so numerator, and if you divide it by, so ultimately addition of all of them gives you 1. Okay, so the, your, this probability distribution is also correct. So hope you have understood this example. So you need to understand the minimum number of the minimum number with associated with random variable and the maximum number. So all right, hope you have understood this example as well. Try the similar example given in notes of finding the probability distribution of any given random variable. All right, then we'll move for the next concept. Welcome back, students. So X. Uh, there is something called as expected value of the x. So if we have these many outcomes that x1, x2, xn with the respective probabilities p1, p2 till pn, then the mathematical expectation of x or you can say the expected value of x is given by e of x is equals to p1, x1 plus p2, x2. I mean you are just multiplying probability with its uh, favorable outcome, the number of favorable outcome or you can say the value of the random variable and then adding all together that gives us the expected value of x and the second one is the variance of x is summation of probability to the squared values of x minus summation of probability into x, x its square now the x is no, example here is x denotes the number on dies it's only one dies calculate expected value of x and also the variance of x okay so now on one dies if this is the value of x so it's only one dies so what we can get maximum one and minimum one and maximum six so we can have your probability of x so we have the values 1, 2, 3, 4, 
five, six. And when it is one dash, each one of them has, has the same probability. So P of X is getting one is one by six. This is also one by six. This is also one by six, one by six, and then one by six. So P of X is one by six for each of the values. Then the expected value of X we need to calculate. We need to add, multiply X into P of uh, into P of X into P of X. So we these two we need to multiply. So we get these values. Then the next thing, x square has to be multiplied with p of x. I mean all the probabilities. So x is 3, its square is 9, 4 square is 16, 5 square is 25 and 6 square is 36. Alright. Okay, then we need to find the summation of x, p, x. That is, that is nothing but our expected value of x. So, expected value of x is equals to summation of this all. So, 1 plus 2, 3 plus 3, 6 plus 4, 10 plus 5, 15 plus 6, 21. So, it's 21 divided by 6, which gives you 3 point something. Say 3.4. And then, variance. is summation of px square minus summation of px the whole square so summation of px square okay gives us 91 by 6 minus summation of px px in the sense this column so it is probability into x so that we have already calculated is 21 points 21 divided by 6 and it's square okay then this gives us 91 by 6 minus Four forty one divided by thirty six. So six and thirty six LCM is thirty six. So I have to get multiply this with six. So this gives five forty six minus four forty one divided by thirty six. So it is 105 divided by 36 is the variance of x. So variance we have calculated is 2.9. So hope you have understood. Once you know how to find the probability distribution, the next thing is you need to justify, needs to multiply these two columns, these values of a, a random variable along with the probability that gives us Px, that is nothing but x into probability of x. Their summation gives you the expected value. And in the case to find the variance, we have to Square these all x and then multiply with the probability and apply that formula that gives us the variance of x. So we have understood this expected value of x as well as the variance of x. So I'll give you one more such example.
so x is the number of heads in a toss of three coins find the expected value of x and also as well as variance of x so we have already written the probability distribution for this okay so the number of heads minimum r0 and when it is three coins we can have maximum three all right then we can directly write here probability of x so for zero heads that means all are tails so it is only one possibility and there are total eight outcomes for three coins and for one and two there are sir three each for one head and two tails there are three possible cases and for two heads and one tail also there are three possible cases and for th all three of them head there is only one case now the next thing is you have to multiply x into p of x to calculate expected value of x and then you have to square x and multiply with p of x to calculate variance of x so we hope you are able to solve and complete this example so all of you just note down this and also solve this example calculate the value of expected value of as well as the variance of it okay so then we'll stop here in this video so see you in the next video with new concept till then study well